Pleasure to meet you. Welcome to Celtic. Just start us off with your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions. Now you sit here as the, the head coach of Celtic's women. Oof. I think I've been saying in many, many words so far, I've been saying thrilled, excited, over the moon. I've been, I think I've been overwhelmed with all feelings. Obviously, like Celtic is a huge club and uh, we look forward to what's ahead. So yeah, I'm just really excited to get going, really. Uh, and tomorrow it's the first test, so that's going to be amazing. Just give us an overview of your career so far. Obviously, still very young in terms of a coach, but how, is, how have you, your career led you to where you are now? Yeah, so obviously, I've been playing football since I was 10, and that's 20 years of experience. <laughs> uh, but uh, I mean, I was 23 when I started coaching, and where I'm today, it, it's, been, it's been going really fast. But I also think I worked really hard to to be where I am today. So it's not a coincidence. Uh, I've been doing really well. And hopefully I can continue to do that in this in this club. You take over from a coach who was very exuberant and, and quite energetic. How would you describe your coaching style? I would say that I'm very passionate. Right now I'm very calm, <laughs> but it's because on the pitch, I'm passionate, I love football, I I'm very, very passionate about developing players. So on the pitch, I'm on fire. Outside, I'm more calm. And you mentioned it there. You arguably can't come in at a bigger game than the one tomorrow. Just tell us how excited you are to be going up against the biggest rivals and one game away from a cup final. Yeah, obviously, it's a final tomorrow because either we win or we lose. And if you lose, you're out. So for me, it's just like uh, a huge game to start with, and I'm, I'm just really, really excited. How much have you actually been in and around the team and, and, and implementing any style or any thoughts you've had already? Has it been too, too quick, or have you managed to, to put some thoughts to the, to the players about no, tomorrow? Obviously, I think I had my first session Tuesday, and it's what, Thursday today, so it's about trying to keep the same, but also put my my style as well. So obviously it's it's not that that big of change because it's mid-season, it's a game already on Friday. So I think it's going to come more and more as long the time goes. So I, that's that's how I've been working. It's been really intense with everything going around as well. So, um, but yeah, it's, I think, I think it's just about trying to to get to know the players as well because I've never seen them before. I've never like I don't know them, just seen them on video. So it's been a it's been good two days and now we're gonna meet the players soon again. You mentioned implementing your style. How would you describe the style you want to bring to Celtic? So for me it's more about dominating the game. Obviously to dominate the game you need the ball because that's how you score goals. And if we have the ball it's gonna be harder for opponents to score. So that will be the the answer of making it very very easy to understand and obviously it's about the transition if we lose the ball we want to counter press and etc if we win the ball we want to go forward how did you view the landscape of football in scotland before you came here there's obviously been quite a progression over the last few years especially with you know the professional teams coming in how, how did you view it and what are you hoping you can add to it so first time I met a Scottish team was Glasgow City in 2016. We played Champions League in my former club in Sweden. And obviously you can see how much it's progressing because Glasgow City was a big part of the history before, but now Rangers and Celtic is also coming into in that. And not only that, it's like Hart and Hibernian as well. So I think everything is going forward and that's a very exciting time to be a part of. Yeah, the league has been very competitive, especially with Celtic and Rangers becoming professional and uh, the way it's been over the last few years. Are you confident that you can bring silverware to this club? Absolutely. It's as simple as that? It's, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Obviously, like, if you look at my history, I've been in China, I've been in Denmark, I've been in Sweden, I've been in England. I have a good network. Um, 
I also very keen about developing young players, which we I already seen that we have in the team. So, like I said, I'm very very thrilled of what's coming next. Hi, Elena. Welcome to Celtic. Um, you mentioned there uh, about sort of implementing your style and saying you've not had very long to work with these players. But it, given that circumstance and the sort of magnitude of the game, what have you prioritised this week in training? Obviously, it's about not changing too much because it's about that the players need to understand what they need to do on the pitch to, to, to win against Rangers. So it's more about like getting myself and my touch of it, and uh, that's what I've been trying to do in these two last sessions, and we have one more today. Um, the other question around that, uh, this big game, it really highlights the pressures that come with a Celtic job. Have you thought about that and how you might prepare for the pressure of, of being a head coach at Celtic? I mean, I come from clubs where you need to win. And I mean, this is something that I feel I've signed for us to be a part of winning the league, winning the Cups, be successful out in Europe. So I know about about that, but I don't see it as a pressure. I see it for something that I look forward to, to come and, and help out to make that achievable. So if I see it as a pressure, not right now. <laughs> not really. <laughs> and just finally from me, uh, just wondering what the shape of the squad is looking like for tomorrow we've had a few injuries we've had a few players coming in and out maybe some who are maybe ready to return can you give us any news on that I think the players that have has been out is still going to be out and then obviously Lucy did her comeback and she's a part of the squad still so that's the news thank you very much <laughs> no worries hi Alina what was it about Celtic that convinced you that it was the right step to come here as manager Obviously, it was the ideas of um, what they look forward to, because for me it was it was so important that what I sign is for what I signed for is a, a great project, uh, and this project that Celtic brought up was obviously to be successful forward, winning the league, winning the cups, being successful in, out in Europe, but also about building this academy so we can still work with the players that we are we have in the academy and make them better so they can compete in the first team. So that was something that really, that's the idea I fell in love with. But obviously, to be honest, I also, I also really like that during that process, I got to know very good people around the team, the club, and it just makes my choice like much easier because as the first day here, I've been feeling very welcome. I already feel a part of the big family here, and I'm just really, really happy about wearing the badge. The women's team usually play their games at the Excelsior Stadium in Airdrie, but how eager would you be to get the girls playing on Celtic Park and the big pitch outside there? I mean, wherever we play, it's going to be huge, but obviously the first time I stepped out there, just looking at the arena, I got really overwhelmed. And I can't wait to see the fans because I've heard very good things about them as well. So I can't wait to see them tomorrow night. But also, of course, when we're going to play here, wherever we play, I want them to be behind us and support us. Uh, so you replaced for Ann Alonso in yes. the dugout. How significant was the work that he done when he was at Celtic for you when you're coming into the job now? I mean, obviously, that's what I like is that they play kind of the same football that I want. I want to have possession. I want to be attacking. Uh, I want to go into high pressure, like that's my style of play as well. So it's just some some parts that is different, but otherwise I think that's something that is going to suit me really well. Thank you. Thank you. Hi there. Um, you watched the game against Montrose from the stands at the weekend. What did you take away from that? That we have good potential in the team. We have really good uh, players, um, obviously. Uh, at that game, we were really good at scoring goals. And then we I also see something that we can improve, and that's something we can work during during the season. And yeah, I saw both good and something that we need to improve. So that's a that's a easy answer, but not so 
complicated. complicated. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, and as well as tomorrow's game against Rangers, you do also have Glasgow City um, very soon next weekend too. So it's a tough start. But is that something that you relish? Like for me, I like challenges. So I'm not going to... I'm not gonna, how do you say, I'd rather be challenged than be comfortable. So I think it's a great start. Obviously it's it's two of the best team in the league. So I'm not, I'm, I'm just thrilled really. Like I'm really excited. So first Rangers and then let's see Glasgow. <laughs> Can I just, that's one final, just about your injury that, that obviously stopped your, your playing career. What did that do for you as a person almost and as a coach now? Did it, does it make you more appreciative of, of the time that players have on the pitch? Does it make you hungrier to succeed now as a coach? What was that like for you? Mm. Obviously, I have a lot of, lot of history with injuries. So the last injury gave me sepsis. So I was almost losing my life. So that gave me a different appreciation and made me easier to go away from football, like not playing it. Uh, but what it has done for me is that when I stopped playing and I was 23, in my head I was only, only thinking about that I wanted to be the coach that I wished that I had so I can help players to fulfill their dreams. And that's something that I've been living by since then. So obviously I, I, I love to perform to win games, but my biggest passion comes also from developing players so they can fulfill their dreams and I think that was something that really gave me the the strength or the passion about loving my job so I think that that can be the answer actually <laughs> okay. uh, just a quick one to end on you said there that you, you know, part of your brand is to develop players. How big is the youth set up itself is it going to be in this next era under your managerial career? Obviously, it's something that I'm going to talk to people around the club, like how we're going to move forward, because right now my only focus has been Rangers, and then next week it's going to be Glasgow. I think we need to plan the time of when to do what. So. Obviously, we haven't been talking so much about it yet because my focus has been this game and trying to get to know the players because they're the most important for me right now. Uh, but we have some ideas and I think you all will know soon enough. Hiya, how you doing? Welcome, welcome to Glasgow. But um, I just wondered if you'd spoken to any of the senior players just about this fixture and what it entails. Uh, of course, I like, I've been talking to all the players, but not particularly about this game because... For me, it's just a game that we need to play to to win. Uh, it's not about the opponents or anything like that, but like that. I know that there's rivalry in between many of the Glasgow teams, but I haven't really experienced it. So for me, it's just a game that it's a semi-final and we need to win it so we can go to the final. So not really. Maybe I should, though. <laughs> Maybe I talk today. You mentioned a few times here just about silverware and, and winning the title. Celtic have yet to win a, a women's title in Scotland. Is that one of your main directives and ambitions is to, is to deliver a championship? Yeah, obviously I've already written history in this club because I'm the first female head coach here. And uh, the next would be amazing to be writing history and win win the league for this club. So that's what I want to dream about. Celtic have quite a long association with one particular Swede. Uh, do you remember much of Henrik Larsson at Celtic when you were growing up? I can say like he was my role model when I was young, when he was playing at Celtic. So uh, I know pretty much about his time here. The King of Kings, right? <laughs> Maybe I can be become the Queen of Queens. I, I wondered if you had come up against Joe Potter, the the Rangers manager. She also played for England too. I wondered if you had come across her in your career at any point before now. Not that I remember, no. no. But I know who she is.
Uh, Lionel, welcome to Celtic. Firstly, I want to ask, you've previously stated that you want to build a dominating side. Could some success in the Sky Sports Cup be the first step towards building that dominant side? Yes. Hopefully, yes. And finally, when did you first hear of Celtic's interest and how quickly did the deal move along? So, first time... Uh... It was before traveling for my vacation, and then I had my first meeting during my vacation, and then it's gone really fast after that. So I was listening to you speak to Mia Eriksson and Amanda Zaza when you were coach of Eskil Stuna, and um, it was obviously quite a while ago now, but you spoke a lot about wanting to control games with and without the ball. How has that sort of changed in your experience since, obviously, that being your first head coach job? How has that changed since then? Like, obviously, I need to adapt uh, sometimes. Uh, I I went to Eskilstuna that was playing a low block counter-attack. So I had to slowly trying to get into what I wanted to because going from low block, low block to counter-attack to how I want to play games would be a big difference. And I didn't want them to to do that change really quick. But now, because... Fran was the former manager and he had the same same style of play as me. I can just get in my ideas pretty quick. So obviously, I also f from Sweden and in Sweden, you know, if you've seen Sweden play, it's about defending and trying to score. So I have that structure within me. So but I also have the other one and that's attacking. And um, we know there's been quite a lot of links between Scottish and Swedish women's football. There's obviously quite a few Scottish players who've gone over to Sweden, one at uh, Rosengård, your former, your former club, um, and then a couple of Swedish players over here. How much did you know already about the SOVL? Was it just that one game against Glasgow City or had you sort of heard bits here and there? Uh, like, first of all, I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm not that old, so I know many players and uh, I've heard from before, you know, like it was all like before when it was part time almost, but now how it's been successful. Obviously, I when I was coaching Eskilstuna United, we we played against Beko Hecken, and that's from like that the, there was a player that came from Celtic, and if you can get that kind of players from from Celtic, obviously you know that there's good players playing here and knowing that it became to professional league, I think it's just going to go forward. So I know from different sources. And um, finally, I'll, I'll give you an easy one to end on. Um, you did an interview about music and you spoke about how you love Dua Lipa. Are you going to be getting that blasted in the changing rooms? I think I will wait with that. <laughs> we take step by step, right? But yeah, Dua Lipa, she's good. You had an experience in Beijing. Yes. And is this a good advantage for you to communicate with two Chinese players, two Shens? Yeah, like obviously China gave me a, a great experience because the people there are so kind, they're so polite, and that's exactly the same th like feeling I've got from both Shens. Uh, obviously, my... Chinese Mandarin is not fluent, but I know some some words, and I try to joke with them with a like a little bit with the, those, and they get surprised every day when I say a new word. <laughs> so hopefully they can teach me more, and I can teach them some Swedish because English they can already. So.